crop production and management. The plants grown and tended in a field for getting food are known as crop plants. The produce from these crop plants may be in the form of grains, roots, fibers, etc. The science that deal with the growth, development and culture of plants and animals for food and human use is called agriculture. Crop Production To meet the increasing demand of the fast-growing human population, we need excessive and intensive crop production. Successful crop production depends upon many factors such as Understanding how crops grow and develop Effect of various nutrients, climate and water on the growth of the plant Modification and management of other factors for increasing the yield of the crop Classification of crops Crops are classified based on seasons in which they are grown and seasons depend on temperature, humidity and rainfall. Three categories of crops are generally grown in our country. Category of crop, time of sowing, time of harvesting, examples, Kharif, rainy season, June to July, October to November, paddy, maize, cotton, etc. Rabi, winter season, October to November, March to April, wheat, gram, mustard, etc. Zaid, summer season, March to April, July to August, sunflower, moong, gourd, cucumber, etc. To raise a crop, a farmer has to carry out certain important basic steps in his field. To perform these steps, various implements are required which are discussed here under. Preparation of the Soil As topsoil is the most fertile layer of the soil, it has to be loosened and aerated so that the roots are able to penetrate deeper. The process of loosening and turning the soil is called ploughing or tilling. Ploughing is done by using tractor-driven cultivator or animals are used for this purpose. First, ploughing is done on dry land, then afterwards, large soil lumps are further broken down into small pieces using a wooden or iron plank. This is called levelling. After ploughing, the soil is levelled and furrows are made. The soil is watered before sowing and is carried out. Sowing of Seeds After the preparation of the soil, seeds are sown. Sowing is the process of putting seeds in the soil. There are two methods of sowing seeds. Sowing of seeds by hand or manually. Sowing of seeds by using a seed drill mechanically. Sowing of seeds by hand. The process of sowing seeds by hand is called broadcasting. In this method, the seeds are scattered in the field by the farmer in standing position. Sowing of seeds by using a seed drill. The method of sowing seeds by using a seed drill is better than broadcasting as the seeds are sown at regular intervals and at a proper depth. Moreover, this method of sowing is much faster and economical. Tools for Sowing Traditional tool used for sowing seeds It is a funnel-shaped implement having two or three pipes with sharp ends. Seeds are filled into the funnel which enter into the soil through pipes. Modern tool, seed drill for sowing seeds. This implement 
gets attached with the tractor and it sows the seeds uniformly at a proper depth. It also helps in giving proper distance between the seeds and covers seeds with soil so that they are not taken away by the birds. In this way, it saves both time as well as labor. Manuring The mineral nutrients which are essential for the growth of the crop are obtained from the soil. If soil is not left uncultivated for one season, then it leads to loss of particular nutrient from the soil, making it less fertile. Therefore, manure is added to the fields to replenish soil with nutrients which are utilized by the previous crop. Manure is made by the decomposition of plant or animal wastes in pits at open places. The bacteria decompose the undigested cellulose, nitrogen and phosphorus in waste to useful nutrients which can be easily utilized by the plants. Irrigation The process of watering the plants in a field is known as irrigation. Fields are usually irrigated by canals, wells or tube wells. Irrigation should be proper. Excess of water or scarcity of water both are harmful for the crop. Excessive supply of water to the crop results in a condition called water logging. If water logging continues, then it reduces the supply of air to the roots and stops growth of crop. To prevent the damage to soil, excess water is drained out from the field and this is also necessary for the preparation of the next crop. Sometimes fast and strong winds accompanied by rains results in fall of mature crop. This condition is called lodging and it results in poor produce. Weeding The unwanted plants growing along with the main crop in the field, also known as weeds. They also spread pests onto the crops and sometimes produce poisonous substances which are harmful to the crop, thus reducing the yield of crop. So, the weeds must be destroyed. The process of removing weeds is called weeding. Methods of removing weeds Weeds can be removed by using various methods like Manual method It involves uprooting the weeds manually. By using tools, it involves using tools like harrows, spades or trowels, kurpa. By chemical method, it involves spraying chemicals called weedicide which destroy the weed. The weedicides are sprayed during the vegetative growth of weeds before flowering and seed formation. Crop Protection Protecting the plants from pests Plants have to be protected from certain organisms which damage them and thereby make them unfit for human consumption. Such organisms are known as pests. For example, locusts fly in swarms and damage leaves of sugarcane and wheat crops. Different methods are employed by a farmer to minimize the damage caused by the pests. To scare away the birds, scarecrows are placed in the field. Certain poisonous chemicals known as pesticides and insecticides are sprayed in the field to kill insects. Biological Method of Controlling Pests Biological control involves introduction of certain organisms in the field which eat away only particular pests. Protection from disease Plants also suffer from diseases. Diseases are caused by bacteria, fungi and viruses. They can be controlled if suitable methods are employed at the right time. 
seed borne diseases can be controlled by separating diseased seeds from the healthy ones. When the seeds are dipped in water, the diseased seeds float on the surface and can be removed. Soaking the seeds in fungicidal compounds and antibiotics also help in destroying infection. Fungicides and antibiotics are even sprayed on the standing crop. Harvesting When the crop attains maturity, it has to be cut. This is called harvesting, which involves both cutting and gathering of mature crops. It is either done by sickles or machines called harvesters. In harvesting, crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground. It usually takes three to four months for a cereal crop to mature. Threshing and winnowing Threshing The process of separating the chaff from the grain is known as threshing. This is done either with the help of machines called threshers or by the use of animals. Plants are also beaten on a stone to release the grains. It is done manually. Now, these days, threshing is carried out with the help of combined harvesters. You might have seen huge size combines on roads during harvesting season, which shows combine. It is called a combine because it is a combination of two machines, that is, harvester and thresher. Winnowing After the grains are threshed, the chaff is removed from the grains. This is known as winnowing. Farmers with small holdings of lands do the separation of grain and chaff by winnowing. Storage of grains The fresh crop has more moisture. The grains have to be dried before they are stored to prevent the growth of microorganisms. Hence, before storing them, the grains are properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture in them. This prevents the attack by insect pest, bacteria and fungi. Stored grains also have to be protected from rats, insects and birds. So pesticides are sprayed on them. This keeps the pests away from granaries. In our country, most of the farmers depend on rainfall for irrigation. Therefore, some stocks of grains must be maintained to compensate for the storage due to failure of monsoons in any particular year. This is known as buffer stock. Food from animals Both plants and animals provide us with different types of food materials. The rearing and breeding of animals, along with providing them with good food and shelter, comes under animal husbandry. The main objective of animal husbandry is to improve the breeds of domestic animals and to provide them with better nutrition and atmosphere so that the yield of milk, eggs, meat, etc. can be increased. People living in coastal region consume fish and therefore they have strong bones and better eyesight along with sharp brains and fish food is rich in vitamin A, D and mineral iodine. 